It's Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you guys through our master bedroom, finally. I feel like it took me a long time to finally do this video, and that's kind of just because it never really felt finished. There was always something that I wanted to add or something that felt missing, and there's still some parts of the room that kind of feel like that, but for the most part, I'm ready to share it with you guys, and I'm really excited because it's actually one of the most budget-friendly rooms in the entire home. I feel like a lot of this stuff we sourced in here was really affordable and there's lots of DIYs so I'll have a couple DIYs sprinkled throughout this video as well and then I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through my intentions behind everything why I chose certain items and just design wise why I decided to do certain things and I hope it'll be a really fun and informative video for you guys so if you all are ready let's get into the video all right so as far as the design elements in here we started with a base of a jute rug and I love jute rugs because they're a natural fiber and a natural material so it really kind of grounds your space and creates a nice neutral natural base and why I say natural is um, when you bring the outside elements such as jute or stone or linens and things like that I just feel like your space breathes easier and I love the look of that so jute rug to start it's from rugs USA this is a super affordable jute rug one of the most affordable ones that I've seen it does shed um, as do most natural fiber rugs so if you get a jute rug it's most likely gonna shed but um, you know we just vacuum it regularly and I'm really happy with it and then our bed frame is actually from Wayfair and it's a dupe for a West Elm bed that's like I don't know twice the price so yeah I really like this bed and I like the kind of linen-y headboard and it actually Actually has as you guys can probably see here like a ledge around so it's nice we'll set our tissues there or snacks or our phone or like our chargers or whatever so it's kind of a nice little ledge if you have the space so um, I'm really happy with it we wanted to make sure that we had an upholstered headboard just for like comfort reason our lamps are from rugs USA as well and I really wanted something to kind of ground this space because as you guys can see when you walk into this room you see the trans and I didn't really have the space for a photo above the bed which is usually my go-to for a focal point so I kind of had to frame this wall in a way where it felt like anchored and intentional and the way I did that was by using really large lamps and then we framed the transoms by using some curtains so I feel like this kind of just helps create a more finished look obviously they're not functional or we would never use them but I think that it just really makes this wall feel a lot more intentional and gives your eye a purpose when looking at it I really like the big lamps that anchor the space and these lamps can go for like 300 bucks on other websites so the fact that you can get these for like 90 to 100 bucks on rugs USA is so good our dresser and our nightstands are actually a DIY and I have a video on how I did that so I'm still really liking them we did them a while ago but I think that they really fit in our room there's not too much wood in here so it kind of allowed me to play with browns as far as like our lamps and picture frames and accessories go so I don't know I really like how this side of the room is framed so our curtains are also all from Ikea and I love the light linen -y fabric on them I kind of wanted to keep this room feeling coastal when I first started designing it um, just because I feel like that's what Mike and I really like we love going to the beach Mike's from Huntington Beach California and I'm from Florida so I felt like having a space that had coastal elements made it really feel like home but then as I was living in it as we kind of were talking about it I'm like I kind of want to add some rustic in here so I think when you blend two styles that it can really create a dynamic space with lots of depth and um, I'm glad that I didn't go so coastal I kind of mixed coastal and rustic so I feel like the curtains are still a very coastal element because they're very light and linen-y and keep the room feeling very casual which I wanted and then we also added a black ceiling fan and I really like this fan you guys it comes with a remote it was really affordable and we just got it from the Home Depot and Mike said it was pretty easy to install so I feel like the black fan really kind of plays off the rest of the black elements that we have in here our black hardware our black curtain rods stuff like that so kind of 
makes the room feel a little bit more cohesive than using like a white or a wooden ceiling fan. So I love the black, I love the sleek look of it. And we are big fans of the fan. Get it? Yeah, sorry. Anyway, but um, I'll link the fan below. But eventually while we're talking about the ceiling, I think we'd really love to do some kind of woodwork up there, maybe some beams or just kind of like a wood paneled ceiling later. But you guys, we're on month eight in our new home, so we gotta kind of pace ourselves. But I think that would be something that I would really like to do to kind of just warm up the space and draw your eye up. So this back row of pillows back here is actually from Target. I like them because they're super neutral and they have like just a very light linen-y fabric, which I love. Keeps it feeling very casual and they have this fringe on the end, which um, for your back row of pillows, I typically like to keep that very neutral. So it's a nice base to play off of. And then I just got these two pillows from Home Goods. It was like a pack of two for $25. And I see these there all the time. They have different colors and stuff like that. Um, so if you're looking for something like this, I would definitely check out Home Goods. And then I got this little lumbar from TJ Maxx. And then our duvet cover is actually from Target as well. This is the Project 62 duvet cover and it comes in several different colors. And I just love the texture on it. It's um, kind of light and gauzy feeling. So it kind of just feels like very light and casual. And dog mom hack, we have a black lab and she sheds like crazy. So sometimes if people are coming over and we just haven't had time to wash our sheets or whatever, um, this actually flips over and it looks really nice on the other side too. So that's what we do sometimes if we have to, but um, just know it looks good reversed as well. Um, it's just kind of like a light plain linen -y type fabric. And then this throw is actually from Pottery Barn. Mike got this for me for like a Christmas present, I believe, a while back. And I sleep with this every night. Like I use this as my blanket. It's so comfortable and cozy and it's so soft. And I love just throwing it on the bed when I make it because it gives it some, you know, texture. And just think it gives it a little bit of something for visual interest. And I like to just kind of throw it on there when I make the bed, so. And then our like just regular sheet base that is from Magnolia with Hearth and Hand as well. So it's from Target and I like it because it has kind of a neutral pattern and it's not super white so it won't show like a bunch of, you know, if you get like makeup on it or whatever. So it's still light to wear, you know, it feels like a light fresh bedding set but it has a little bit of something to just you know, high dirt and stains or whatever. So let's move on to kind of our little window area. All right, so this bay window area is one of my favorite spots in the entire home. I do all of my work here, all of my editing, and it's just so nice to sit here and look out at the trees. It's so calming, and I love that I feel like I'm almost outside. So I actually had a reading chair here at first that I got from Home Goods, and then after really thinking about it, I was like, I'd never sit in that chair. The chair, when it was here, it was facing this way. Way, so it didn't really make use of the really pretty view that we had and I decided to put a desk in here so um, I started looking for a desk I really wanted a DIY project because I wanted a desk with character and that just felt really cute and cozy and I really wanted a really pretty wooden desk with a beautiful like aged cottagey kind of restored primitive look to it so um, I actually have a whole video on this corner. If you guys haven't seen it, I will link it here. I found a desk for free on Facebook Marketplace and I ended up turning it into this desk. So I will insert a picture here of what it looked like before. And it was definitely a process, but I'm so happy with how it came out. I love the kind of just aged look of it and how it feels like I got it at an antique mall and paid hundreds of dollars for it when in fact it was free and I spent like $50 on all the materials. So. So I was really proud of that and then this chair I love I wish it was linkable for you guys but it is from home goods it was $100 and like I said how I tried to blend rustic and coastal in here this is definitely a more coastal element but like things like this picture I got that from Hobby Lobby that's more rustic um, same thing kind of with this planter that's from Michaels it was like I don't know like seven bucks and then another rustic element that we have here is this olive tree this guy is from West Elm and I actually got it at the West Elm outlet. I was so excited when I found it. It was funny because Mike and I were like at our cap for spending for the day when we went into the West Elm outlet. I didn't think I would find anything and I saw this and I was like I have to have it and Mike was like how many olive trees do you have in the house and I was like 
but I need her. And I'm so glad that I got her because this is probably the most realistic olive tree that we have in our home. And after having it in here, I would honestly pay full price for it, even though we got it at the outlet, just because, I don't know, I think it looks really pretty. It's very full and I love it in this pot. I actually did a little DIY in my desk video. I kind of styled this corner, so sorry if I'm repeating some stuff for you guys, but if you haven't seen it, I walk you guys through the whole styling and DIY of the desk and putting this guy in this planter, but let's move on over to the dresser. All right, so over here we have the dresser, and like I said, this was the DIY. I have a video on it. I ended up just putting some pretty books down there that I got. It's a mix of like things that I found at the antique store and thrift stores. So I love like the kind of worn aged look of the books. And then I paired it with this little mini stool that I also found at an antique mall when we were up in Asheville. I think that the primitive wood just adds like a very cozy lived in effect to the room. I think it's a perfect spot for it so I can always look at it. Um, then this little picture here is from Target and it's from one of the lines that Studio McGee did. And then over here I just thrifted this little riser. It was like three bucks at Goodwill. And I put this little broom here. I found this at an antique mall and I thought it'd be a cute spot for it. So then this is actually from Mike and I's wedding. We did a sand ceremony. So the white sand is actually from Siesta Key from near where I'm from in Florida. And then the uh, darker sand is from Huntington Beach from where Mike grew up. So we did that at our wedding day. It was kind of cool. So this is a little memento from our wedding and I wanted to display it somehow, but it was very kind of like coastal looking and I didn't want it to feel too themey. So I decided to kind of tone it down with these rustic elements. So like the rustic picture, the aged picture from the rustic olive branches and like the kind of like cozy primitive feel of the wood and the broom so kind of toned it down a little bit and made it not seem so overly coastal because I feel like when you have like sand in jars that can become really themey really fast if it's not like done the right way I guess so it took me a while to kind of figure out how to incorporate this and I'm happy with how this all looks so then I got this guy at home goods it was $50 I think that it was really important because we had two spots on either side of the dresser and I didn't want them to feel too plain and I wanted to dress them up with a little bit of height um, but I didn't really know how to do that until I found this really pretty arched mirror at home goods But I know Home Depot carries a very similar one So I will link that below but I thought it was really nice to incorporate two decor pieces that added some height to this wall Just to give it some more visual interest and make it feel a little bit more intentional. So um, Yeah, I split it with a mirror and then this blanket ladder So yeah, that's this area and I just want to show you this last little corner over here all right, and then lastly, I just wanted to talk about this painting and the picture light. So I saw this picture light that I was really inspired by on Amber Interiors website. I think it was like $150. And then there was also one on Studio McGee and I don't remember the price of that one, but I know it was like upwards of like $400. And I love these picture lights. I love the aged brass look of them just because when I'm trying to design a little vignette in a corner or something, I always just try to incorporate one item that's aged or older or has that vintage effect just to like you know really make the room feel cozy and lived in so I wanted this to be aged brass but I didn't want to pay those expensive prices so I decided to try the DIY one and I think it turned out really well so I will insert my little tutorial right here Okay, so I found this battery operated light on Amazon. It was right around $30 and I thought it was so convenient that for 30 bucks, I could have a working picture light and not have to hardwire anything. But when I received a lamp, I didn't love how there were two tones of gold. It looked kind of cheap to me. So I decided to take a chance and try to give it that aged brass effect. So I first started by taping off the light portions of the light with painter's tape. I just made marks and then cut the tape to size and then stuck them on there so the light wouldn't get sprayed with spray paint or anything like that. Also, please ignore the fact that I had a failed attempt at the aged brass effect, which is why I'm starting with the lamp like this. It was just way darker than I originally wanted and I didn't want to take you guys through that and wanted to show you what actually worked. So I started with this Rust-Oleum Sunlit Brass and I liked that it was a matte finish so it would automatically kind of give it that worn aged look where the shine has kind of dulled. I think one of my previous mistakes in my failed attempt was that the paints I used were too sparkly and it just looked a little bit off. So I tried to avoid sparkly or shimmery paints as much as possible in my second attempt. So after the spray paint had dried, I took some 
matte black acrylic paint that I got from Walmart and I just mixed it with some water to thin it out and create a little wash or kind of like a glaze which will really help us give it that aged effect and I would just dip my paper towel into the paint and then dip it into the water to soften the paint a bit and you could pre-mix this but I was just kind of being lazy. <laughs> However, I would definitely recommend a lint-free cloth or a sponge over a paper towel just because I did feel like some of the towel kind of rubbed off on the light but I slowly built this up in certain areas and I tried to mix it with some gold paints in my previous attempts but again it just made the piece too sparkly since a lot of those gold paints have sparkle in them so I just found that matte black was what worked best. So I just kind of alternated materials to perform this effect. I used sponges, paper towels, and paint brushes. The paper towel was great for blotting and evening out the wash, and the brush was nice to get into the nooks and crannies and really concentrate the wash in there because those are the areas that would naturally show some darkness. So I really tried to concentrate the corners, edges, and crannies to make it look authentic. You totally could put a finishing protectant spray on here, but I figured since nobody would be really touching it and it was going to be up on the wall that it didn't need it, but you could if you wanted to. Um, but I was super happy with how this piece came out. Very simple and really gives it that aged worn look that I was going for. So yeah, I love how this came out. You guys could use that technique on, you know, a candlestick, a tray, anything decorative that you want to kind of give that aged brass look to. I love that this is like an actual light that works, but we didn't have to hardwire anything into the wall. So we just have a little remote and it turns on at night, which makes it feel kind of like very cozy. Picture lights just really finish off a piece of artwork and make it feel very designer and very intentional, super high end. It just like gives it that like fancy your look so I love that love how that came out I love this frame it's from TJ Maxx it's a 24 by 36 size and I think it was like a $40 frame which is really great because it's really good quality and I love how the frame kind of looks to be vintage and how that darker brown plays into our lamps and just like that rustic primitive look we have in our space and um, I believe it's still available online as of now, so I'll link it. But um, then this photo is actually something that I took on one of my trips to Big Sur with a couple of good girlfriends. Like this is one of my favorite road trips of all time. And it's just a really good memory. So I had this picture that I loved from the trip and I decided to try to make it into an oil painting just so um, it kind of gave that primitive rustic look, but it was still a coastal print. So just really tying every Everything in the room together really blending those two styles in one piece of artwork and I was able to do this on Photoshop but if you guys have a photo that you really love I'm sure there's lots of apps that will turn them into like a faux oil painting as well um, this print is available for a digital download on Etsy and I will link that too but I think that this picture in itself just really blends everything together that I was going for in terms of the two styles mixing of the coastal type picture but then how it's in a more rustic primitive kind of display style with the vintage painting look and the frame that it's in and once I put this up on the wall I was like okay it's time to film the master reveal so I hope that you guys enjoyed this and had fun kind of seeing my design intentions behind everything and I want to thank you guys all so much for watching you guys are the best I cannot believe that I just hit 40k it's just crazy to me that that many people want to watch my videos I remember when I first started decorating and doing DIY I was like it would be so cool if I could have a channel and like people would actually watch my stuff like that would be crazy and it is so crazy that all of you guys who are subscribed who like my videos who comment who just watch my videos thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart it really means a lot to me and I will see you all in my next video bye